All right, thank you for everyone for joining us today at our Committee of the Whole meeting. Uh, we are live streaming again this meeting and it's available in recorded video for residents to watch again. Our Committee of the Whole meetings are a different format. We don't vote on these meetings, um, so there's no vote to open the meeting. Um, these are for discussion and for council to get more information before making decisions at regular meetings and planning meetings. So we have um, a couple of delegations with us this evening. I'm going to alter the order a little bit and we're gonna go down to 4.1.1 for our CAO to uh, basically introduce our delegates and talk about uh, the Seven Oaks Ag Learning Center. Um, Councillor Kleiber, go ahead. Okay, so um, Mayor Christian, uh, I'll be recusing myself and leaving the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. I will send you a text. Um, did she check out? We can send Councillor Kleiber a text um, when we finish the discussion on the Ag Learning Center. All right, Mr. CAO, I will pass it over to you. Uh, welcome, Seven Oaks. Right. Welcome to Seven Oaks and uh, good afternoon, Council. So there is uh, um, uh, some final construction done at the Seven Oaks uh, Agricultural Learning Center. Uh, at that time, I was uh, talking with uh, Wayne and Alexis, and uh, uh, they asked if they could come in and speak to Council as a delegation, just to give an update of where the, the center is and and some of the things that have been happening since uh, since for sure the last year and, and since the, uh, the center has been going. But I just want to, to uh, get into before they started that we were waiting for a couple of last events to happen and at the uh, Agricultural Center. And one of them was uh, uh, some drainage works to be done that were outstanding. And they couldn't, couldn't be finished last year in the Fall, which we all are aware was uh, the rainiest season ever in Manitoba's history for a, a fall season. And we have confirmation now from their engineer, KGS, and our engineer that the drainage work sites at the Seven Oaks Division Maintenance Facility and Learning Center uh, have been completed. And uh, we did a site visit, uh, the municipality did a site visit on Friday, November 6, 2020, and also confirmed the installation of additional 338 trees and shrubs that uh, they'll probably be able to tell you more about and mention. So, uh, Mayor and Council, uh, just to let you know that that uh, we have entered the stage where the Agricultural Learning Center is now completed and it was just outstanding drainage work that couldn't be done due to the weather. Great, thank you. Well, I want to thank uh, Wayne and Alexis for coming today to present to us. I know our community is excited to uh, hear about what you've got going on there and it's uh, really coming together. So we're happy to see things wrapped up from our end and I'm going to pass the floor over to you guys to present to Council. Maybe just before I turn it over to Alexis, uh, I'd like to thank the Council for the opportunity to provide you an update. I know that uh, Brent had already talked about the uh, delegation that was able to uh, come and see what actually on site we've done uh, you know and unfortunately due to covid that was a very limited group that was able to attend on site there but uh, we are excited about what we've uh, built out there and uh, alexis has done a fantastic job uh, you know under her stewardship of the uh, site it's been fantastic and uh, you know we want to be a good neighbor uh, out there and uh, so we think we're living up to our requirements under the development agreement and uh, you know and we've Kind of gone beyond that so uh we'll let i'll turn it over at this point now to alexis and i know she's got a really good uh, powerpoint presentation to run you through hi there i'll just uh, uh take a moment to speak uh, alexis is just having some issues with her audio we're just working on having her call in right now it just be a moment This is one of those evenings where we've got technical difficulties. <laughs> Never fails, right? Yeah. yeah. I think we did provide the PowerPoint presentation ahead of time. So hopefully maybe somebody there would be able to uh, share that with the council. Mitch, are you able to bring that up? 
a copy. I can share my screen. Uh, I don't know if you can uh, walk us through or if we should wait for Alexis to call through, but I can certainly share my screen. Yeah, for sure you'd get a lot more out of the presentation if Alexis is able to uh, talk us through it. Just while we're waiting for Alexis, maybe the other thing that's exciting out at the uh, Ag Center is you'll notice that the greenhouse uh, exterior has been completed. Uh, so I know that uh, Alexis is working hard at, at getting the uh, planter tables uh, construction constructed and uh, you know getting the, the plants ready uh, for growing. So she can probably provide a further update on that. He did an amazing job on the tour that we had, and, and we were really grateful for that. Uh, myself, Councillor Preg, um, our CAO, and uh, Miss Elias, our Economic Development Officer, uh, she walked us through distancing and with masks, and um, just the amount of plantings that have gone on, the shrubs, and pointing out the programs that you guys have had. Um, I really appreciate that. So I, I'm yeah. sure that once COVID restrictions lighten up, I, I know all of Council will really appreciate seeing that. It, you, it's going to become a gem in our community, that's for sure. Alexis is in. Can you hear us, Alexis? Hi. Can you hear me? I can, yes. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm having an issue with my laptop and not hearing audio. So I'm actually just trying another phone here to see if I can uh, join you visually as well. I apologize for that. I do have this uh, pre presentation shared if you wanted to walk us through. Oh, excellent. Okay, and I've just got you now on uh, two phones. Um, okay, you can still hear me? Yes. Okay, sorry about that. It's a technical issue on my side. Okay, I'm sorry, I missed some of what you have been talking about, but you would like me to now share with you the year in review? Yes, that would be great. Great, okay. So, um, I'll just jump right in here. So if you want to um, switch to the next slide here, we've got uh, two sections I can present on. The first one being um, the program aspects. So we can uh, move over one more slide. Essentially what um, happened, as, as we all know, is COVID happened and it changed the way we were operating. So up until the point of COVID, things were going really well. Our bookings were only increasing. We were getting busier. Um, uh, anywhere from three to five uh, student classes coming per week. So uh, when March came along and from March through June, we just had to run in a different way. Uh, three ways that we connected with students and teachers were virtually connecting to teachers via PDs and just one-on-one -on -one to support them, essentially in helping students and families to connect to nature from their homes. Uh, second way was providing supplies for students in their homes through their teachers, uh, namely seeds, soils, and pots. And the third way was providing resources. So um, documents and citizen science projects, for example, that would help students and their families continue to connect to nature. And um, the hope there was that we could still enrich the curriculum and provide some engagement. So moving over to the next slide. Uh, through summer, we had participation in a few forms. We had three wonderful youth summer staff. Uh, two of them were recent graduates from Seven Oaks School Division. Um, and one of them is now a substitute teacher in Seven Oaks. So they all had great connections to Seven Oaks and were able to work with us over the summer. Our BEEP Summer Day program did come to the Aki Center as they did last year, just less frequently and uh, for shorter periods of time, but we were able to still host them. There was a two-week cooking camp that made use of our garden and our kitchen. And we had Wayfinder Summer School base their programs out of the service center and the Aki Center. So through that, they were able to, the students were able to achieve their grade 10 science, geography, and phys ed credits to keep them on course for graduation. And they were able to do that in a land-based manner. Um, lastly, we had the greenhouse build happening. So we had our vocational education building trades uh, instructor on site, and he was able to hire youth as staff for that um, 
build in the summer. And those are same students that started the program last year and are continuing the program this year. So they gain some meaningful employment in between. The next slide. Um, that brings us up to today, um, this, this season. So uh, with restrictions being a little different for schools, now we've got a return of classes. Not as many as we normally see, but they are coming in and actually next week we've got a class every day of the week. So that feels much more normal. Um, we've been busy with the students when they come out seeding, uh, collecting seed and harvesting medicines and doing the seasonal activities um, that, that we find ourselves surrounded by right now, tracking, inquiring about habitat, fire building, orienteering, and now gathering in the passive solar greenhouse to learn about passive solar design. So things are feeling a little bit more, for norm, more normal at this point. So now I'm going to switch over. We've got uh, the next slide is just uh, introducing you to the, the other part of the presentation, which focuses on our land stewardship progress in 2020. So here we say our joke was COVID or not, here we come, because this is one area that just wasn't really affected um, by COVID, the work that we could uh, we could do work on the landscape safely, both ourselves and our contractors. So this uh, moved ahead without any real challenges. And what I'm going to do here is if you flip to the next slide, I'm going to introduce you to the eastern part of the property. So as if we were there today, first I'll take you through the east and then we'll switch over to the west. So just an update on the garden, we continue to grow a very diverse garden uh, with many heritage seeds. And these are the ways that we continue to connect to food and food security, seed saving, plant origins, indigenous crops, as well as building healthy soil. Um, in our next slide, we've got um, the advancement of our model tall grass prairie. So that's just in the bottom right hand corner. So that's um, when you're coming onto the site, it's right next to the vegetable garden. So this was all planted by students and it gives us an opportunity to see what the tall grass prairie used to look like. It's planted by students. Students have collected the seeds that we propagate on site and then they get to explore uh, biodiversity and ecological interactions here. Um, next slide. We have one of our tree planting projects. It was um, meant to be for students to plant 160 shelter belt trees in and around the Aki Centre. Um, unfortunately, with them not on site, we had the, the assistance of EAs to plant these trees. So these are um, closest to the Aki Centre and uh, the berms behind to the north of the Aki Centre. The next slide. Uh, we have um, a, a new design on the landscape. It surrounds the teepee, sweat lodge and fire gathering area. And this was inspired by student voices. Um, they had asked for, and this is a quote, for us to plant medicines that they can learn from, that they can learn to identify and to use in ceremony. So uh, many medicines and herbaceous medicines are planted along this area now. It's a rainbow shape. And if we go to the next slide, that was sort of part one in the spring. Part two in the summer was the planting of 181 Indigenous shrubs. And this was incorporated into the summer school program and curriculum with Wayfinders. So throughout July, those students actually um, used this opportunity as part of their phys ed credits, but it also connected to the soil science they were learning, the geography and the ecological interactions they were learning about in their coursework. Uh, next slide, um, just bringing you back to the BioVader, what was the BioVader which is now the Novi Comp, just a different brand. Um, and that's continuing on, even despite the COVID um, shutdown, we we're actually able to refine some of our operations and we've started to achieve a better quality compost and more consistent compost. So sometimes the slowdown is really good for those operational things, um, but it's kept going and it's still generating compost today. Next slide is um, one of the features we came to see with council this fall, which is our ecological buffer. So here in um, late October, early November, we planted 338 trees. So they're a combination of very high diverse and uh, densely planted group of trees. There's nurseries, those are fast growing trees, tall shrubs, so they take care of the understory, and shade trees, those are slower growing tall trees. So planted together, they provide a very thick screen and they're uh, similar to a shelter belt. However, a little bit, I would say, improved in that they actually provide um, more of a substantial habitat for wildlife. 
So much more diversity and habitat on the landscape with something like this. And in addition to those trees, there were 26 additional trees planted on the eastern side along the eastern berm, as well as the eastern pathways. And the next slide, um, because this, this is a job that was done by contractors, a very large job at the end of the season, um, this is the way students are involved in that same concept. So in talking about biodiversity and plant cycles, these are three students from West St. Paul's School who helped to plant, uh, right behind them you'll see little frames um, where they planted tree and shrub seeds in the fall. And these we hope to, uh, we hope they germinate and we can watch the trees grow from, from start to finish. It gives us an appreciation around respecting those landscapes and respecting those trees that are planted. Uh, once they collect the seeds and plant them and see how long it takes for them to grow, uh, we feel there's that appreciation that develops. Okay, for the next slide. This is a transition slide, so we're gonna imagine that we're walking over to the west side of the property now. So we still have our three kilometers of, of trail, and I was, I was, I just came home to make this call so that my son wasn't stranded at school, um, but I actually saw somebody jogging on the trails just as I was leaving today. And that brings me to the point that we've seen a lot more public usage of the trails. Um, in terms of their maintenance, we did have them scraped, so the weeds, weeds are starting to migrate onto them, but they were scraped, and now we have, um, a scraper grader um, at Seven Oaks so that we can do that work on our own next year. So they'll be maintained that way. Um, next slide. On the western side, we have our medicine wheel shaped garden while we get to gun, which is our circle garden. So if you've been on site, you'll notice that this has really thrived. Um, it's, it's only in its second year of growth in this photo and it's doing just wonderful. So this again is an example of the tall grass prairie planted in here. And again, this helps us to ground ourselves when we're talking about uh, tall grass prairie restoration. It's such a big job. It takes a long time. But when you see these plants thriving after two years, it gives people a sense of what we're going to accomplish and what it looks like and, and gets us connected to those plants while the larger landscape is being uh, tended to in a similar way. So again, uh, I think you've probably all been here already, but this is where we have our seven sacred teachings benches and two patches of medicine that students are now harvesting from, the sage and the sweet grass. And these plants are now migrating around the site. So we're using this as a nursery spot, uh, digging up the live plants and the live roots from these sites and bringing them on to other sites. So for example, around the teepee and the sweat lodge area, the sage and the sweet grass planted there came from this spot. Okay, the next slide. Just a progress report on the pond. So it's in, we've got one more year of contracted to support to get the pond up to the position that it's hoped to be in. And it's on track. So we saw a massive bloom of species this year. We're seeing, identifying about half of the species mix that was put into the soil. So it's pretty good after three really dry years. So we're seeing the seed mix up here. Uh, we're seeing enhanced diversity. We're seeing this being used now as um, a habitat. Um, and again, the end goal would be that it does support wildlife. And we do this with the support of the Conservation Trust. So they're helping us to accomplish this project at this point. So it's going in the right direction. We've got a few areas uh, where we're watching erosion. And uh, essentially from this point on, it's just remedial seeding. So we're looking at the species that aren't showing up yet. And uh, Native Plant Solutions is coming back and doing uh, overseeding in those areas just to boost up the cover to make sure it's evenly covered and it's, um, it's got a lot of biodiversity. Next slide. Is, um was a big project. We've waited a number of years now to put seeds in the ground on the, oh, I think we might have missed one. There it is. And the prairie restoration. So having um, about 30 acres altogether, 25 to 30 acres that we're restoring. The seeds went into um, those acres this spring throughout May and June. And then we did um, another seeding in November to catch the areas that were uh, we were unable to catch in spring. And those were largely due to uh, either construction routes or contractors working in those areas, um, reforming ditches. So we didn't want to seed there in the spring. We waited to fall to do dormant seeding in those disturbed areas. So we've now got the seed into all those areas and we're now into um, surveying and managing them. 
So the next slide, this does take a while. So we anticipate over the next couple of years, well, already we're actually seeing germination. Um, but this is what we're going to have to watch carefully for in the next few years. And we've got some seeds stockpiled for any remedial seeding we have to do there. Um, what we're noticing here is that restoration is a cultural and ecological action. So the types of lessons students are coming away with is that if we want change, we, we have to do the work and we have to um, accept that sometimes change is slow, but it doesn't start unless we get started. And um, we're also finding that it's transformative. Um, this, a lot of the work that we do here, we feel relates to reconciliation and addressing the harms of the past. So in any way that the soil isn't functioning right now as a living organism, we're trying to address that and make it better in, in the future. So it's addressing the things that aren't functioning and coming up with solutions so that it does start functioning. Um, so these connections are being made and it's really impressive to see the students converse around these topics. Okay, we're almost done here. So the next slide will be the remnant prairie. So just an update here. We've got about five acres of land um, in that ditch and it, it holds all of our indigenous plant history. So we're finding this to be an excellent source of biodiversity. And this is where we acquire and collect and harvest all of our seeds from. Uh, these seeds end up being used in our restoration mix or we use them to grow into live plants. So you'll remember that in 2019, we managed this area by controlled burn, and that's to increase seed production and hold and increase the biodiversity, um, but also see what kind of effect that has on invasive weeds. So we're still young in that process. It's just begun. Uh, but what we're seeing is that the diversity did increase after the burn and the weed management. We have much better idea of what's in there and what's expanding and what's contracting. So you'll see us out there in the summer doing mostly mechanical weed control. So hand pulling or trimming certain areas to, um, to push back the invasive species. The next slide just shows you some students working in the remnant prairie in this picture, they're seed harvesting. But a lot of things happen in here. This is essentially where we have over 60 species of plants. So birds and insects, this is where we find them, nests. And uh, so, so it's a, actually a really hot spot for us, um, given that we find a lot of insects and life in, in this, in this uh, spot on the land. The next slide just shows you what we've done with some of those seeds. Um, this year we planted uh, over 2,000 plugs using the indigenous uh, tall grass prairie seeds that we harvested from the remnant prairie. And these seeds were used both on site to improve areas like the um, model tall grass prairie and the circle garden, as well as the area around the teepee and the sweat lodge. But we also saved um, live plants to gift to schools in September so that they can have model tall grass prairies on their site as well. Um, next slide is um, close to wrap up here. We've got uh, our, our last project that we just finished up in November and it's of the passive solar greenhouse. So the exterior is 99% complete. Um, it was um, built entirely by the vocational building trade students. Um, sustainable energy uh, is another trades program that we have that is looking to get involved in the operations now and uh, course linking. And this is where we can expand our production of local foods and enhance on our studies and uh, conversations around soils and plant cycles, as well as positive solar design. Uh, the next picture is just to take you inside. So you have a, a quick look inside the greenhouse. So it's in ground growing and we've got shelves along the outside to grow our transplants. And um, this was a couple weeks ago now. It's been cleaned up and finished a little bit more. Um, but essentially what we're left with is some interior work that we can finish uh, between now and spring. So that concludes. We've got one more slide just recognizing that um, I think the, the other notable change uh, both on the landscape and the programming side is the support that we have. So we have had a number of partners support us, TD Friends of the Environment, Winnipeg Foundation, Conservation Trust, Cargill Cares, at U of M and the U of W. So in that regard, our partnerships as well are growing into the community. And I should have also included East Interlake Watershed District because they have helped us this year as well. So if there's any questions, I'm happy to entertain them. Thank you so much, Alexis. I'm going to go around the council, virtual council table here and see if there are any questions for you. Thank you so much for your presentation.
Councillor Link, do you have any questions for Alexis? Hello. Uh, no, I don't have any questions. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Buschetti, any questions for Alexis? No, no questions. Just it's you're you're doing a lot of. There's a lot of stuff going on there, and uh, you can see the difference when you drive by already. So thank you. Thank you. Councillor Craig. Oh, you're still on mute. Oh, still on mute. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, um, I must commend uh, Alexis for doing a wonderful job. On the tour there, I saw the amount of people there working on the thing, on the landscape planting, and the amount of work that is being done there, the progress of it. And I don't have any regrets in voting for this project to go. And it's a learning experience for the students, and I'm very happy to be part of it, be one of the councillors that has supported this, this, this agricultural center. And if I have to do it all over again, I will do it again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Preg. Um, just for myself, I, I echo the comments made by uh, Councillor Preg. It's you guys have done really great work. It looks fantastic. Um, what, what we've recently heard from our community through um, strategic planning um, is that they want us to preserve green space. They want more trees. They want more paths. And, and we can have this wonderful partnership with you at the school division and, and our residents, as you guys have pointed out, can make use of this and can be jogging on those paths. And, and it'll be a bit of a slow process for the trees to, to grow, to, to mature, um, but they're planted and you've exceeded what the RM requested in terms of 50 and, and you mentioned 360 some. So um, it's really going to be a beautiful area and it's really what our residents wanted to see in our community. So um, it, it was a rocky start in terms of communicating the vision that you guys had to the communities, right? Um, to, to know what was gonna be coming here. But now that it's come together and, and you're uh, working to, to meet your goals, it's really looking fantastic. So I'm excited about the partnership that, that we have. Um, I think I just want to take this opportunity. Residents are able to use the paths anytime or do you have hours? Um, I know a lot of residents are viewing our meetings uh, on YouTube now. And so I, if you could maybe comment on um, the accessibility for our residents to make use of this. Uh, yeah, so I mean, we uh, we do allow the residents to use it as part of the development agreement. Uh, the RM put restrictions on the hours that we can use our facility, and then the hours that um, the public can utilize the the walking trail. So, I, off the top of my head, I think eleven p.m. might be the outer time limit for when general public can access the trails. I don't know if anybody remembers off the top of their head. You can probably look it up. I have the uh, agreement. And off the top of my head, I'm something sorry. we should be putting in our, our um, you know, letting residents reminding them too. And I think yeah. um, Alexis, if you know off the top of your head, your website address, if residents are wanting to keep an eye on things that are happening there, do you guys have a website for residents to view? Yes, if you. Uh, visit sevenoaks.org, so that's numerical7oaks.org. Uh, what you'll find is if you click on the program link, this is the easiest way to navigate you there, otherwise you've got kind of a funny URL. So if you uh, go to sevenoaks.org and you click on the programs link, you can scroll down to see the AKI Center, A-K-I Center, and uh, that's where you can see our website. Um, and click on our YouTube links or our Instagram and find ways to connect with us there. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. And uh, Mayor Christian, so I just looked up under uh, F trails of the uh, development agreement. It indicates that uh, the public would have access to the trails from 7 a.m. till 9 p.m. Okay. That's perfect. Thank you. 
that's important for us to know so that we can advertise that as well. Councillor mm -hmm. Craig, you have your hand up. Go ahead. Can you hear me now? Yeah, it's from Mr. Smith, Mr. Smith, Sue, and uh, Alexa. One of my constituents there uh, brought to my attention that some trees were not plant were not planted, and I know another resident phoned me about that teepee, and I put him in touch with a uh, school trustee, Derek Davy. They spoke, and the matter the the problem was eliminated, and um, the resident, uh, being the counselor for the area, approached me. I put the resident in touch with um, school trustee Derek Davy. Derek Derek Davy, the superintendent, is working with the resident to make sure everything is working along to satisfy both all parties. I don't know if you can comment on it or you know anything about it. I think, I, I, Wayne, I'm just gonna stop before you do. I, I think we won't talk about the development agreement. I think that if there's um, concerns from the resident, we can deal with that off the topic of the development agreement, if that's okay, Wayne. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I'm not actually aware of the uh, situation, uh, so I couldn't comment on it. I think it. Um, if Mr. Dabby's dealing with it and it's between the councillor and the resident um, and the school division, then, then that's proper process. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any thank other you. questions from council? Great. Well, I want to thank you both for coming um, to present to us. We really appreciate that. And I want to continue to see our partnership uh, blossom. Um, and, and, you know, we've given you some space in our newsletter to inform residents and talk about things that are coming up. So uh, we definitely want to share any uh, information that you have and support what you're doing over there. So thank right. you both. Thank Yep, thanks for the opportunity to present. And uh, as you can see, Alexis is doing a fantastic job out there with uh, Alex and the rest of her crew. She really is. Yeah, it's great to see. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. All right. I want to thank um, our municipal uh, emergency coordinator uh, and Shelly Napier for your patience and, and waiting for us here. We're a little bit delayed. We had some technical difficulties at the beginning of our meeting. Welcome. Thank you. And um, you're going to be discussing um, our, our emergency plan with us. So we really appreciate that. There's, we've had a lot of uh, emergency discussions and consultations uh, with COVID on. So it's certainly really important. And uh, I will... Turn it over to you. Mayor Christian? Yes. Uh, we should invite uh, Councillor Cliver back to the meeting. Yes, thank you. We can send a text, thank you. I think we'll all be sending her text, welcoming her back. A couple of us have sent texts, so we're just waiting for Councillor Kleiber. I think we'll let you guys get started. We've all been 
few of us have been sending texts to Councillor Kleiber and she can she can follow in when she joins us again. I'll pass it over um, either to Ken or to um, Shelley to, to discuss our uh, emergency plan. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, okay, welcome. I'm Okay, hi. I hope everybody is doing well. Um, uh, Ken and I have been working very hard to finish your emergency plan. And um, it's a different looking document and I wanted to share it with uh, all of you. Um, so let's just go over first of all, what is re required of, of the municipality provincially. So under legislation regulation, you have to have an overarching plan. That plan has to include a specific hazard vulnerability assessment. You have to have a business continuity section. Um, you have to have uh, public knowledge included in your planning. And it has to have all the pieces that uh, are required. There's actually 152 pages of requirements between the legislation, regulation and standards. So um, one of the problems that we found with the existing three-part plan was that it was really cumbersome to use in an emergency. Um, in fact, when Ken and I were working on it together, we had a really hard time even just grabbing the information to put it into the new template. So we wanted to do a new template that was more operationally based so it would be easier for Ken to utilize um, for his teams. So this, this template is modular and it is uh, has uh, a body to it and it has schedules that you'll all be using. So what we've created is a couple of things. So you're gonna have the plan and I think there's 19 schedules. Uh, that includes the business continuity for you and it also includes the HVA. Uh, we have appendices and we've also added a, a COVID plan a back to work guide in the COVID plan. So that's gonna be a separate, a separate uh, file. And we've also done a severe weather plan, which is also modular that has nine or 10 schedules to deal specifically with if it's flooding, we can pull that. If it's a winter storm, we can pull that. If it's a tornado, we can pull that. So we've got that in a separate file. The appendices that you're gonna see in the, uh, in the plan um, are, in, are things that don't need to be actually in your plan. They just are information that you're gonna wanna be able to grab quickly. So I think that this plan meets all of those requirements. Um, once, because we're all locked down and obviously we can't do training and education, what I think we can use this time to do is to get all of the administrative stuff done. Uh, I believe that we are there. There may be some small changes and of course we will have to update this yearly, but um, we'd like to be able to move forward with the training and the education and the volunteer training and the team building and actually that's that support program that goes around the plan. So I will turn it over to Ken. Um, he was uh, excellent at you know finding all the bits and pieces that we needed. Um, it's a great team effort and I, I'm hoping that council is pleased with the result. Hello everyone. Uh, yeah, as, as Shelley said, the new plan just visually uh, seems more organized, more easily, easy to navigate and identifiable than the old plan, which was, uh, from an operational perspective, would be very difficult to implement and have everybody that is necessary to ensure a, uh, a successful emergency uh, response would take place that each understand their component of it, be able to isolate their component and do what is important to them to fulfill their role. With the old plan, that would have been very difficult. And now as uh, somebody who I would still consider to be a relatively junior mech, I know it's sort of been a baptism by fire year, uh, but as somebody who's a relatively junior to this, when you look at an overwhelming plan, you look at a plan, that is tough to navigate. You look at it and say to yourself, well, if we ever have this emergency, how can I ensure a smooth delivered application of this plan by all those that are involved? Uh, considering the amount of time that you have to prepare uh, those volunteers and those critical components 
uh, to ensure service delivery. If you have something that is convoluted, confusing, difficult to navigate, it just makes implementation of that plan so much more difficult. I think uh, the plan that we are able to uh, construct and present, thanks to Shelley and her framework, is very much a deliverable plan where you aren't relying on uh, navigating an entire block of a document. You can have something isolated for the EOC or a reception center uh, for the variety of different components within it. What is important to me as a volunteer? What do I need to know? I can pick up a package, know the schedules that are important to me and be able to implement that component of it. So for me as the MEC, the overall guidance and uh, coordination of the emergency, whatever it may be, is laid out for me. So I know what is important for me. Uh, the different uh, the, the different participants each have guidance. And to me, I find that modular system that is specific to each individual role, whether it be uh, things the CEO or the mayor or council should consider, things that I'm considering aren't necessarily paramount for council. Stuff that I'm considering may not be paramount for a person working in the reception center or dealing with other components of the emergency. But the fact that it, the specific roles are laid out just make it so much more digestible, not so overwhelming. And uh, when, when it comes to actually doing our tabletop exercises and laying this out, everybody's going to see the, how much more user-friendly it is. And, uh, you know, the, the fact that we are meeting virtually uh, and everybody has, you know, busy components of their lives and uh, to, to be able to sit down, have this very workable document, look at it and see how well it functions rather than just a lot of minutia that is difficult to wrap your head around. When everybody is so time constrained, to have something that's very clear, concise, and direct is so vital. And uh, I believe this uh, plan does it, this program and format does it uh, great. And, and for me, as a junior MAC, I feel very confident in implementing it moving forward. Thank you both. Yeah, it, it looks like a, a comprehensive plan. Very impressive. I'm going to go around the table and see if there are questions for you. Councillor Buschetti, I'll start with you. Any questions for our MEC or for Shelley Napier? No, I have no questions. Um, I mean, it, you've been, you said it thrown into the fire here as a new MEC, and uh, I applaud for what you have to do because sometimes the answer you have to give is not what we want to say. So you're the one going out there saying it. So. Thanks. Have we got Councillor Kleiber on? If you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Any questions or comments for Shelley Napier or our MEC? Well, Shelley, very uh, comprehensive plan and really lays everything out. Good strategies. Anything that makes life easier for uh, Ken is a good thing and uh, it's nice to know that he approves of that plan and feels that it's going to make his life easier so anytime his life is easier our life is easier during an emergency so i thank you for the, such a comprehensive plan and it's well it seems to be very well thought out so hopefully we don't have to engage it hopefully we don't have any too many emergencies coming up but if we do we know that we're prepared with you Great, thank you. Councillor Pereg, any questions for Shelley Napier or Ken? Oh, you're still on mute. Can you hear me now? Yeah, it's a very comprehensive report Shelley did and um, I know I'm full of confidence in her. She has been doing this for a very long time been to a lot of our seminars and I'm very, very thankful she's with us and helping Junior Ken along, Junior Mac along. You know, and I'm also 
full of confidence of Ken and his ability to get things done. I've worked alongside him, and I know he's a very determined young man, and he can achieve anything he puts his mind to. Thank you, Kenny. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Link, any questions, comments for Shelley Napier or Mr. Azaransky or Mac? I, I read through the emergency plan template, and I was just wondering um, about Schedule 17, the business continuity plan. And it says, uh, by right-clicking on the worksheet to copy, what site do you go to um, to access that business continuity plan? Um, Councillor, I, uh, I'm actually looking at your, your plan. It, it actually is in, in the folder that I gave you finished. I'm not, I'm not certain. Oh. Um, I'm looking at the finished version. It's um, okay, Shelley. Um, sorry to interrupt, but is the finished plan what we received um, in the meeting uh, in the agenda? Because I received an emergency plan template, and then I received the um, the um, Emergency Measures Act. Did I miss something? Because I have the template. I don't have the plan. Then, by the looks of it, uh, I believe that something's been missed for you, Councillor, because the the version that I uh, handed in to the office, um, Ken and I handed in on, on uh, thumb drives, is finished. So I'm not certain if you didn't get the finished version, but Schedule 17 is West St. Paul's. You don't have to right-click on everything. I know what you're looking at. You're looking at the blank template, which is which you right click on to add in the floor plan of your EOCs. The finished version, um, the finished version has all of that. So I don't know, I don't know what to tell you. Um, I can email it, or Ken has it. We can make sure you do get it. But well, it was completed. I'm I'm getting I'm getting confused here because if I got the emergency plan template for Manitoba communities, um, Napier emergency consultation, I would assume if I got that, then everybody else got that same thing. Uh, right. Okay. Did you get? Are you looking at the template? And then there should be 19 schedules, and the template is. Um, the doctrine and it lays out the foundation of the plan and then the schedules are the actual working documents. Did you get that? I don't think I have the actual working document. I just got the template in the agenda. So we've got the 19 schedules uh, in the agenda. It's 183 pages. Is that correct, Shelley? Have we got all the... If you have 19 schedules, um, they're all yep. completed. Yeah, um, the actual body of the template, I'm looking at it now, is probably about 30 pages. And so completed, that would be correct, Mayor. Okay, yeah, we've got the complete package then, Councillor Link. The very end is uh, Schedule 19, demobilizing I, I the EOC. Yeah. I have Schedule 19, post-event reports, debrief. And it talks about a debrief of hot wash. Um, uh, but it, it's part of the Napier Emergency Consulting Emergency Plan Template. I don't think what I've got here is our finished copy. So yeah, just to double check if it's we've got all 19 schedules. That was we've got the our CO saying yes, that's what he attached as the document. We've got the final emergency plan, emergency plan template uh, with the 19 schedules attached. 183 pages. All the schedules are at the end. Yep. 
Uh, all the well, schedules have been personalized for West St. Paul. All of the information is West St. Paul's information in the schedule. So I shouldn't be seeing relevant schedules right clicking the worksheet to copy that information should be right there and it, it, it isn't um I don't okay so know. we'll we'll follow up when i'm when i'm right clicking the stuff is there when i click on mayor you can click on it so we, we can follow up and discuss with you further counselor link i'm able to click on those doc on the documents but okay we'll hold on then. that that might be the problem i printed this out i didn't go right clicking yeah, I didn't click on, I didn't read it on my screen and click on the screen. I will try that after the meeting. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, um, Councillor Link, for Ms. Napier or Ms. Razransky? No, thank you for all your work, though. Oh, it's, it's always a pleasure with this council. I want to thank you both as well. This is a great document. There's a few of us that have been on council a, a couple of times um, that have seen previous plans and you've helped work with us, um, Shelly, on, on those plans. And this does seem much more user friendly. I'm excited to see um, content on um, business continuity. It's really important and it's often something that we forget. How do you respond to an emergency? What do you do? But how do you keep that business continuity going? And we've talked about it with you in table talk sessions, but it's really great to have that in here and that piece covered. Um, this does seem like a really straightforward document. I, I'm really, for residents watching, um, and we have so many more uh, viewing and seeing our meetings now, I, I just want them to know how confident council and administration is to have you both working with us and, and, and protecting us and helping us uh, prepare for emergencies. Um, Shelley has so many years of experience and worked with the province and is able to provide that high level connection to legislation and what we need to do. And, and everyone keeps saying that uh, Ken's a rookie at this. Um, but, you know, your boots on the ground and when we've had actual emergencies in West St. Paul, you've been on the front line. So the wealth of experience that you've been able to bring working with Shelley is how is this going to play out when we are in an emergency? And so you've seen it from the side of the fire department and have that um, hands on experience and knowledge of our community. So I'm really just so excited that you both are guiding council and helping us. Uh, prepare for emergencies. We've been dealing with COVID. You guys have been helping us and, and we've responded in a timely way. I will go so far as to say we're leaders in the region in how we've responded to COVID. Um, we've, we've really, you know, we've, we've taken recommendations from Ken right off and responded really quickly as a municipality to shut uh, down our offices to, um, you know, sadly cancel some events at Sonova Centre and really protect our community. So I want to thank you both. Um, you know, I, I really feel more than I ever have that our community is really well prepared for an emergency and well protected. Um, so really thank you both. This is really amazing work that you keep doing. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure. I don't know if the CAO has anything to say as well, if you're wanting to comment, but. Yeah, I'd like to thank uh, Shelly and Ken. Um, Shelly's always uh, had a wealth of information and experience for us in and has uh, saved us a, a few times. Uh, I mean, I mean, in to, to keep us uh, going with uh, our emergency plans and helping us out. Always willing to help with the RM. And uh, and Ken Azaransky as our mech is is uh, something that was my vision for a while to uh, recruit Ken. Of course, we posted the position and he had to apply. But I, I always felt that. We had a person in this community that's a great leader that uh, would be the perfect person to lead us in in an event of crisis and uh, he sure is showing his true colors for leadership thanks to both parties thank you very much thank you and uh just uh, i just want to mention one thing when i um uh, when i came on as one thing that i wanted to uh, ensure was when it, done, when it did come to emergency response, emergency coordination, that we were prepared with functional programs. We were able to eliminate minutia and unnecessary uh, documentation that didn't serve our needs. And 
the, this, this global document that is our emergency plan is a very significant step in that direction. So when it comes to uh, coordinating an emergency, having a coordinated response is having clear direction and not a lot of antiquated, unnecessary documents. And I think the municipality has really stepped up to speed, prepared ourselves for an ongoing, evolving document into the future. And uh, it, it, it uh, can't go uh, under, understated at all how important it was to get to this point and then have this document moving forward. And uh, uh, with Shelley's assistance and consultation on this matter, which I think was critical in achieving this, uh, West St. Paul is in a great position as far as uh, provincially, regionally, uh, to respond to whatever emergency may come uh, about in the future. So uh, it's, it's a very good feeling as MEC to be in this position uh, right now, knowing that we have this document, whatever may be in, uh, on the horizon. Thank you very much for all the kind words. Thank you both. Um, and so for next steps then, the next steps would be, um, we bring this to council meeting on Thursday, our planning meeting for approval. And I guess question to you both, the next steps would be, we need to be doing a tabletop, I'm sure, um, scenario in the, in the near future. Well, if I, if I may, Mayor Christian, um, the next step yes. after you pass by resolution, the plan has to go forward to Manitoba EMO. And then um, it needs to be into the office prior to December 31st to meet their deadline for requirements. Um, you'll get a letter back or Ken will get an email back um, accepting the plan. Um, and I think that once we have, we now have a workable plan that is going to be used. So we want to make sure that we train Ken's volunteers and council on how to use it, what to do. We have, um, I, we, I guess, virtually can do a tabletop exercise. Um, given that our vaccine news seems promising for 21, I'd like to move forward with a functional exercise where we actually open reception centers, open EOCs, and you actually role play. So those are some of the pieces that are going to start strengthening West St. Paul's program. I think you guys are a leader. I've said it before, you're a major player in the municipal world. Your program is, is, um, is going to be exemplary when we're, we have all these pieces together. So our next steps are going to be get the plan approved, and then start building all the packages and plans that we go forward and train as soon as we're out of our lockdown. Great, that's great, thank you. And I'm glad to hear we're getting it in before the deadline. That's that's very West St. Paul too, we're on time. <laughs> so that's yes. perfect. Thanks to you both for making that happen so we get that in and we can keep moving with this. Thank you both okay. so much. Thank you. And Merry Christmas right. to everyone Stay if safe. I'm not talking to you. Stay safe. <laughs> Okay, you as well. Thank you. All right, we're going to take a, a five minute break, if that's okay, and go in camera um, to deal with item 8.1. So um, it, five minutes, is that all right? And um, for those watching for live stream, we'll be coming back uh, when we come out of the camera. Thank you. Thank you.
All right, I believe we are out of in camera and back live stream. Sorry for people waiting. We don't have any other issues to deal with at the committee of the whole meeting this evening. We thank everybody for uh, council for joining us, everybody, and uh, for residents who've watched our meeting. Our next meeting is on Thursday, our regular planning meeting. That will be live streamed um, and recorded as well. Thank you all, and we are adjourned. Have a great night. We'll see you Thursday.